Hi, and welcome to part two of this PowerShell tutorial series on building a SQL or SQL module. In the first video, we've seen how to first just create our base module. And then we also uh, performed the operations of connecting and closing our connection to the SQL server. So this video is going to be looking at how we're going to create the function for executing select statements and then getting that data back in a usable format. So as we've seen before, uh, this is the code that we've used to perform SQL uh, select statements. So we will mostly just be focusing on this part and then re returning that data to the user to then be able to go through and filter uh, and perform operations on. So let's go ahead and let's get into our SQL module here. Uh, so let me just clear the screen here. And let's start by giving a name to our new function. So we're going to create a function and I'm going to call it um, invoke SQL select. And then we're going to do an open and close curly bracket. So as always, we need to do the commandlet binding in the square brackets with the parentheses at the end. And then do a param open and close uh, parentheses. And there we have our basic function here. So for the function, we know that we need the connection uh, for the select statement. And we also need a select statement. So those are the two uh, parameters that we are going to be taking in because we already have our connection. So we want the user to just pass that connection in. There's no point in opening and closing the connections just to invoke the SQL command here. So let's go ahead and let's go and create a parameter. And we are going to create this parameter as mandatory. Mandatory. And then we're going to name it connection. We always try to keep my parameter names uh, the same in, within the module. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier for the end user to then use and know, um, all right, this is always going to be the same name. Like, and we wouldn't want to call it session in one commandlet and connection in a different one. You definitely want to keep them always the same. It just makes usability a lot easier. And then we're going to have another mandatory parameter here. And this one, we are going to type it as a string and we are going to call it select statement. Uh, so it's very, very obvious of what it takes in. And then what we want to do inside of our function, we're going to have a try catch here. So we're going to do try catch. And as always in the catch statement, we always want to do the right error and then get the passed in value by doing the dollar sign underscore dot exception dot message. And this again will pass any error messages that happen within the try statement back to the user. This way, if there's something wrong with the select statement itself, it will pass in the proper message. If the connection is invalid for some reason, um, if the error didn't come up in the connection uh, command, it would come up here and give you the proper error. So let's go ahead and let's start inside the try statement. So what we first need to do we go back at looking at our previous SQL select code, we know that we need to take the connection and create a command. So let's go do that here. So let's do SQL command equals uh, connection dot create command and then open and close parentheses here. So well, that should be good. Let's just capitalize that because it should be. So then once we have that SQL command, we then know that we need to put in the command text. So let's go ahead and let's do SQL command dot command text equals and we're going to do that double quotes and we are going to put that inside select statement here. So that should cover us for our select statement. 
And then what we need to do is we need to create our data adapter and our data set and then load in our SQL command into our adapter and then fill up our data set using that adapter and then return the data. So it's kind of a lot of the steps, which is why we're creating this module so we don't have to do those steps all the time in the future. So let's go ahead and let's create a SQL data adapter here and we're going to set that to new object system dot data dot sql client dot sql data adapter and we're going to pass in our sql command and then what we're going to do is we're going to create our data set which is going to be new object system dot data dot data set and then what we're going to do is we are going to fill up our data set now what i'm going to do is i'm going to be adding a square bracket void in front of it because this command actually outputs a one if it executes correctly and we just don't want this one to output to the user because that might be a little confusing if they're expecting um, different results and all of a sudden they get a one at the beginning they might think that something's off there so we're just going to put a void and we are going to do sql dot data adapter dot fill and we are going to put in our data sets there and then what we're going to do is we are going to do a data equals data set dot tables and again we're going to select that first table which is going to be at index zero and then we are going to return the data variable here so let me just capitalize that just to keep everything the same so that should be good so now if we return in here let's re-import our module let's run our connection here so we do have our connection and it is open so we can see that it is open so now let's go ahead and let's invoke this sql select statement here so let's do invoke sql select and we have a connection so we're going to pass in our connection variable and then we're going to have a select statement so as we know we only have one table right now which is our log table so let's do select from log so just select star from log, which is going to select all the items from our log table. Let's execute that. So there we are. So we actually get all the data back. We can see we have our ID three, four, and six. Because we've deleted them in the previous videos. We've deleted uh, some of the other entries. So uh, let's say you wanted to actually add on to this and you wanted to where ID equals four. And then we can run this as well. And we're only going to get the ID that equals four. But what comes in handy with PowerShell as well is we could do select star from log. We can get everything we want here. If we store this into a variable called results. And then what we could do is we could do results where object ID is equal to four. But let's just see what's in results for now. We are going to see that we have three, four, and six. And if we execute this line, we will only get the four items. So if you select all the events from the log, it'll at least gather all the information that you might need later on. Now, I'm not saying that this is uh, the best way to do it. If you know that you know you might only invoke this sql select statement once you really only need that one id definitely a lot more beneficial to specify it in here this way most of the work is done on the sql server instead of in your code but this is definitely worthwhile to do um, if you are not sure what you are going to be querying after from that database within your powershell script so that is how you would implement the select statement into the SQL module that we are building. So 
The next part that we are going to be doing in the next video is going to be taking care of the insert, delete, and update. I always treat the select separately because that one is fetching data, whereas uh, the other ones are all manipulating the data inside the table. So uh, what we are going to do is we're going to leave that here for today. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.